Hey there, everybody Aaron here, and welcome to this special Halloween series that I'm doing this year uh, to celebrate Halloween. We're going to play through the new, fairly new game at the time. This will be released a couple weeks old at that point. Uh, Goosebumps game. It's just called Goosebumps the game. Uh, I was trying to decide what to do for Halloween, and this actually popped up the day I was really thinking about it, and so I said, why not? I grabbed it. Uh, I grew up reading Goosebumps uh, and a bunch of R.L. Stein's other work. Um, his old, his other series, uh, there was Fear Street and then there was an older Fear Street that I can't remember the series title of um, that was meant for a little bit older kids, but I read those as well and enjoyed them. Even got my sister to read one of those, which is kind of surprising. She didn't read much. Anyway, uh, I thought this would be a fun nostalgic trip. Um, this series is recorded a little bit differently. I've actually finished it as of now. Uh, this is after I've seen it all. I recorded this series and it's going to be edited a little differently than normal. As this is a point and click adventure game, there's a lot of time where I spent really doing nothing, like running around through places again, uh, because I wasn't able to piece things together very quickly at times. And so I've cut a lot of that out because it's just a lot of dead space. I'm not necessarily doing a lot of talking during the time either because I'm trying to think. Um, so this was recorded, I re knowing this, I recorded this a little differently than normal. Uh, as normally I kind of just do a chunk at a time and go. This time I sat down and kind of recorded the whole thing straight through uh, just to kind of get it done. And I'm just going to cut it into chunks, time manageable chunks. So I don't know how many episodes long this is going to be, but I'm shooting to have the last episode up on Halloween. So this will have started however many days before that. Um, I don't know off the top of my head yet because I haven't edited it down yet. But hopefully you enjoy this series. I actually enjoyed playing it uh, quite a bit. It was entertaining and nostalgic for me to go back through and see some of these characters. Also at this time, either alongside these videos or after, I'm actually going to be doing short videos on... Uh, I've decided I'm going to do a bunch of short videos on a bunch of the different things and creatures and items related to Goosebumps that we have will have and will encounter in this game in the game so if you're interested in that kind of stuff you'll be able to see those and get a little bit more information on some of these and that came about because I started doing that after I started playing the game just to go back and like kind of see some of this stuff again because there's a lot of references to Goosebumps and stuff like that so obviously but hopefully you enjoy this series and uh, I suppose let's get going. All right, here we go. This guy creeps me out. We better get a big tip. If you're that concerned, maybe try not to drop his stuff. Hey, for all we know, the lock got busted before I dropped it. I've heard that before. Whatever, just finish packing up this junk. I'll head back for the rest. Who hires a moving company to move out in the middle of the night anyway? Just be glad someone did. We needed the job. Hmm. <laughs> so what about the girl? Should I call her or not? The toll booth operator? You ain't got a chance. Eh, it's probably for the best anyway. What with our ro on the road and all. Say, you ever get creeped out driving late at night like this? What do you mean? Oh, you know, it's late, everyone's asleep, it's gotta be slink. It's gotta be something slinking out from the shadows. This better not be another one of your haunted car again. It's real! Real, maybe, but not haunted. Well, it seemed haunted at the time. You can't scare me with that story. I've heard it a million times. Well, good, that's not even my hairiest adventure. You see, this one time, Evil Genie. Heard that one, okay, well. Zombies. Guess I told you a lot of these. We don't gotta talk the whole time, you know. What was that? So, you gonna open it? Oh, I ain't opening it. You're the one with all the scary adventures. But there's so much weird stuff in there. You saw it. Just open the door already. I can't see anything. Satisfied? Looks like you've got a new tale of horror, Night of the Tipped Over Box. Not funny. Oh, there's someone in there. What is it, some kid? 
Oh, ha ha ha. What? It's just a ventriloquist dummy. Who you calling dummy, dummy? <laughs> hey there, everybody in here, and welcome to Goosebumps. Finally, school's out for the day, and you're ready for a pleasant walk home. Those clouds look pretty bad, though. Was it supposed to rain today? You go to check out the weather, but your cell phone appears to be missing. You must have left it somewhere, but where? Random instruction. More random instructions. Whoa, the mouse disappeared on me on that one. That was weird. The long, empty hallway stretches in the distance. You stop near your locker. Trust the old 402. Shouldn't be too hard. You just need the key from your book bag. Use. Turn the key and lock pops easily. You slide it off and open your locker. Yay, the phone. You cradle it protectively against your chest. You're afraid you'd lost it. After a moment, you calm down and check your phone. Yep, it's still fully charged somehow. Looks like you have a voicemail. You click play. Hi, Mazareth. It's Mom. Just wanted to let you know I'll be home. I'll be home later on tonight. The clients want to take us to dinner. Chad should be home pretty soon, so you two will need to fend for yourselves. Remember, the key's under the back steps. Love you. All right. You slammed the locker door shut. Someone beat the hell out of that one. This happened the day Roger forgot his locker accommodation. Fortunately, yours is easy to remember. Insert key and turn. Someone left a crumpled up paper in the hall. You lean down and take the paper. Oh, it looks like a note. An item was added to your inventory. Yay! Look. Once straightened out, the note reads, Hey you! Hey, you found my note! I hope that I hoped that you would. Sometimes people see notes in the hall and just assume they're trash. Not you, though. Yay? <laughs> so, I don't know about the rest of you. I, um, I'm glad to leave the school building for the second time today. I have a long history with Goosebumps. Uh, I read it a lot when I was a kid. Uh, one of the first books I remember my mother reading to me, actually, my sister and I, uh, was Goosebumps. Uh, and I can't think of the name of it, but it was the one about a mirror, and it allowed you to have the ability to go invisible. The school parking lot is nearly empty. As most of the school's gone home, you can faintly hear the football team practicing in the distance. You peer over, trying not to get so close that you can smell it. You fail, and reek of, the reek of spoiled milk assaults you. That slime is not normal. Your mind races with thoughts of alien invasion or zombie drool. What could it be? You muster some courage and go in for a closer look. Oh, it's just someone's old milkshake. Really, really old milkshake. Yummy. Janitor's shed. By the time you reach the shed, the wind's picked up quite a bit. Your cheeks sting from the cold. point of a shed if you're gonna leave all the tools outside. Made of thick boards, carelessly bolted onto the frame. This probably isn't the original door. Weed killer. We can take it so we are. Okay. Roof. Look at the roof. You're going to guess that the shed leaks like crazy when it rains. See the parking lot far below. The distance makes the hilltop seem even more desolate. Well, it seems to be all for now. Don't forget to save your game. What a beaten up old car. That's Ridge Lane, kind of a sleepy little street. Taking that route home would take would add 20 minutes. Plus it might rain. Well-worn path into the woods. A fam oh, the familiar sights and sounds of the woods. The path leads over the bridge and turns into some trees. Oh no, it looks like somebody lost their dog, poor kid. Let's take it. You pull the flyer from the tree just in case you find a similar dog. 
Answers to GG. Trees. The trees stretch up towards the sky, providing a nice sense of isolation in the middle of a suburban environment. The creek lazily ripples through the woods. We could wade through the creek. We can happily splash around in the creek. Your shoes, socks, and pants are soaked. You also kind of smell funny now. Great. <laughs> You cross the bridge and head deeper into the woods. You reach a small clearing surrounded by trees on all sides. There's a weird guy creeping around. You've never seen him before. The guy looks to be around 30 or so, but there's something off about him. His clothes are torn and he won't make eye contact. Taking a closer look, you notice his hair is green and kind of leafy. You see bugs crawling around beneath his clothes. That's kind of creepy. On a hunch, you raise the weed killer and pump the trigger three times, spraying the strange figure. He recoils violently as it hits his face. Smoke rises from the wounds, and you smell something like le something like freshly cut grass. He retreats to the foot of the hill before falling down and cowering. He doesn't seem to be threatening anymore. He's covering his face with long, ropey fingers and trembling. Yeah, because that's totally normal. You reach the big tree and take a nice deep breath. Ah, the air in this spot smells cleaner somehow. No, there appear to be bugs in there. This tree is so big, it must be incredibly old. If you wrapped your arms around it, your fingers wouldn't touch. Not even close. Wait, this isn't from the roots. The dirt seems to has been disturbed recently. Big knobby roots spread from the base of the tree. They cut through the hard ground like it's nothing. The branches stretch out so far they nearly block out the sun. The thin rays of light make the clearing feel magical. The rest of the trees are backed away from the big one like they're giving it space. It doesn't seem like there's anything else here that's interesting to look at for now. You are into the clearing, that weird guy is still cowering in the corner, so you do your best to ignore him. Leaves crunch under your feet as you walk down the path. This is the end of the woods! You can get to your neighborhood just up that hill. Looks like there's some kind of commotion near the tunnel. A bunch of kids from school are gathered around. They seem really excited about something. You ask what's going on, but Tyler Alseth just glares at you. Mind your own business. Okay. You and Eddie knocked a wasp nest out of one of these trees once. Was it this one? Maybe not. The tunnel is actually a large drain pipe. The water inside stinks like old socks. Okay. Your neighborhood is just up the hill. Let's go to the neighborhood! With large steps, you hike up the slope to your neighborhood. Almost home, you think as you step into your neighborhood. Your spirits fall immediately when you notice an accident down the street. The road is completely blocked. You'll need to find a different way around. Idyllic tract homes lie in the street. Line the street. You assume a happy nuclear family lives in each one. Roses! A bed of beautiful roses in rainbow of colors. You didn't realize roses came in green. Checking the time, you decide it couldn't hurt. You take a deep breath of rose. It smells like cherry soda. That's not normal. Let's take one. You kneel down and carefully pick a blue rose. Ouch, there are some sharp thorns. Hose! It's a standard garden hose. Let's steal it! You attempt to carry the hose away, but it's stuck on a faucet. You end up just stretching it out across the entire yard. It also still has some water inside, which is now all over your pants. At the end, you coil it back up where it started. So that was entirely pointless. Wonderful. Mr. Henderson's perfectly manicured lawn is a staple of this street. You see him taking care of it every Saturday. That moving van got into an accident. The back is open and boxes are spilling out into the streets. 
Well, there's some familiar stuff to fans of the Goosebump series. You peer inside the van and see a ton of boxes along with odds and ends. The crash didn't seem to damage anything. A sense of dread creeps up the back of your neck. The air inside the van is musty. It smells like Grandma's house threw up inside an antique store. You'd feel pretty nosy opening up these boxes to look inside. They're probably full of socks and underwear anyway. It looks really authentic. A thin layer of dust covers it all over. You struggle with the handle, but it won't budge. You do manage to kick up a thick cloud of dust. A top hat! What a snazzy top hat! You can see a magician wearing it during his act. Now we have a snazzy top hat. The flourish you make the top hat disappear into your bag. Looks like a fancy portrait, though it's too dark to see in much detail. A really imposing scarecrow, pumpkin head, straw hair, threadbare hat. Globe. You don't really see these much anymore. It's a globe, a map of the earth. Spin it. Spin to win. You wind up, then spin the globe with that mighty slap. It spins and spins before coming into a stop at Transylvania. Spooky. Books. Some nondescript books are stacked up. Encyclopedias, a thesaurus, and a style guide. Some boring stuff. All stuff required for writing. You pull out a decent looking book and dust it off. Shrugging, you place it in your bag. What is it? A very thick book labeled Encyclopedia. Okay. A canister of something. You opt to keep your distance. That glow doesn't bold bode well. It's addressed to a Mr. Goulberg. Name doesn't ring a bell. It's one of those shrunken heads with weird olive skin, wispy hair, and high cheekbones. Its eyes and mouth are, are shown, sewn shut. Ugh. So this was... Oops, pick, you picked up the shrunken head. It's cold and slimy. And drop it into your bag. So this has got some stuff. If you've ever read the Goosebumps books, there's here's a couple of different references to different books. So that's kind of neat. Um, I can't think of the names of half of them. It's been so long since I've read any Goosebumps books. Uh, but I saw this come out and I figured it'd be be kind of entertaining to check out. People don't seem concerned about the accident. Move down the hill and to the woods. And now there's a weird looking rabbit. It's a small white right rabbit. His fur is unkempt and he seems wary of you. You pull the hat out of your bag and look down to find the rabbit at your feet. He stands on two legs and allows you to put the hat on his head. Amazo, thank you so much, the rabbit says. I'm not much without this hat, I'm afraid. My name is Amazo. Maybe you've heard of me. He pauses waiting. <laughs> no? Well, you have my gratitude, regardless. The flash of white! The rabbit disappears into the brush. Okay. I kind of thought we would put the rabbit in the hat, but... That works, I guess. The name Amazo sounds familiar to me, but I really don't honestly remember much. You hold your nose and slog into the tunnel, taking care to avoid stepping in the water. You creep into the tunnel and unnatural darkness closing in around you. Halfway through, you wonder if you'll make it. You peer into the darkness. Far in the distance, you hear the sound like the ocean. Okay. You're pretty sure it's water, but it shimmers with blackness that normal water doesn't have. The corrugated metal curves up all the way around. The grooves are large and it's hard to get a grip. I think we'll just ignore the hole for now. <laughs> you steal your nerves and push on. This wash runs behind many of the houses on your street. You can usually find all sorts of weird junk that people have thrown out here.
The water here seems to extend forever. You squint, but still can't see the bottom of the pool. A shoe, just one, lies alone in the wash. Part of you wonders if its owner is still here somewhere. We'll take it, because we'll take everything we can. Why is there a chimney in the wash? A chimney? How could there be a chimney? How could a chimney even get here? Getting down on your knees, you put one arm into the pool of water. Its icy chill clings to your skin as you reach further down. The water rises past your elbow. Still haven't hit the bottom. You take a deep breath and press on, reaching down, down. The water laps against your shoulder. You reach left and right but can't feel anything but water. You start to imagine a hand gripping your wrist and yanking you down beneath the cold surface. It's almost real, the sensation of bony fingers wrapping around you, tightening, the pool rushing towards your face. You take a desperate breath and hold it, clenching your eyes shut. Moments later you realize it's just your imagination. You gasp and pull your arm out, soaked but unharmed. You look around and make sure nobody saw that. <laughs> the coast seems clear. Somebody left the bike wheel. It's a little banged up, but not too bad. It probably still rolls just fine. You secure the hub of the wheel and spin it with one hand. Seems fine. It clicks and everything. I want to take the bike wheel. Won't well, let me take the bike wheel. You used to hide things in this tree when you were little. In fact, there might still be a jar of marbles. Nope, no marbles here. You must have taken them home a long time ago, though maybe somebody else found them. A steady stream of water flows out of the pipe and across the riverbed of stones and cement. Your cousins used to live just up this hill and you used to use it as a shortcut. They moved a few years ago though. You hop across the rocks in the far end and stroll to your neighborhood. And crap your pants. What the heck, you take several large gasps and try to calm down. That dog attacked as soon as you entered your neighborhood. Thank goodness it's on a leash. This is the dog that tried to eat your face. She's a poodle and you wonder if being psychotic is common in the breed. The woman doesn't look familiar. Maybe she's new in town. She's dressed extremely formally for somebody walking her dog. You nervously stammer hello to the woman who turns a disinterested eye in your direction. Sorry about the dog. She looks to have got given you quite the fright. Oh, that's okay. I'm Nazareth. What's your name? Forrester. Mrs. Forrester. There's an uncomfortable silence. This town of yours, it's very quiet. What a shame if something were to startle it awake. Oh, I was gonna say I haven't seen you around the neighborhood before. After you ask the question, the woman looks you up and down. You're not sure what she could be judging you for. Fifi and I are simply having a look around. Getting the lay of the land. Some friends of ours came to the area very recently. We want to know if it's a good place to put down roots. The dog's constant tugging has worn away at the woman's patience and she sighs. We must be going. Perhaps we will see you around very soon. Sure, that sounds like a great idea. This is your family's mailbox! You always check it after school because it lets you know if anyone else is home before you get there. You open your mailbox, hoping there's something in it for you. It's a letter, but it's addressed to someone you've never heard of. Must be a past resident. You take the letter out of the mailbox. Coupons! It's a sheet of coupons! For the local dairy freeze. You make a note to go there this week. Alright. Whoops. You remember painting this front fence with your brother a few years back. This is Prepuck. Paid you a handsome ten dollars. Four houses share this mailbox post including yours. You shouldn't open up people's mailboxes. Yours is on the end. <laughs> Okay, so which is our house? Not this one. You're definitely on the right street. You're positive this is your neighbor's house. The girl who lives here used to babysit you. That's not where we want to go. An enormous two-story mansion looms over the rest of the neighborhood. Normally it would 
be pretty awesome, but it's sitting where your normal boring house is supposed to be. That bodes extremely well. The large house reaches up towards the ominous sky, its twisted windows, portals to madness. This is your address, but this is definitely not the home you left this morning. <laughs> <laughs> 